Well, good day there, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. Beautiful morning here up in the bush. Sun's just coming out here up at camp. Roosters are crowing. It's a wonderful morning. Time to go trapping. So driving in here last night, coming back for the day, I'm pretty sure I seen some wolf tracks around here, you know, up around here and in the bush. So I was heading off there eager to set, uh, set up snares on any trails I could find and check my wolf snares. You know, it'll be really exciting to see. But all of a sudden here, it's just dumping snow. Look at it here. So that's not good. We got to get in a hurry here. Or we're pretty quick. We won't be able to find any tracks. Oh, fuck her out. Okay guys, I'm afraid we're, this is not a great start to the video. See what we got here, right here. I uh, really did myself in. We were up right at the crack, you know, 6.30. He was firing, but I was pissing around doing my morning chores. Figured I'd clean out my truck a bit. I did not expect it to snow like this. It's making things a little tricky. I know I've seen wolf tracks over there, but around here I'm not seeing too much. It's not looking too good, but we got some more snares to check. We'll take a look here. We're looking at a coyote here. On first impression, I but probably will cut it out of the video because it just looks dumb, but I thought I had this coyote in here backward, but it looks like we got a good catch. This is a big old coyote. I catch quite a few big old monster coyotes up here in the bush. This is a big old brute of a coyote actually. This is a big old coyote. You can see the fur goes to shit they get this old though. Like you can see, he's got, it's so coarse and not not ideal, It's but it's still a good one. So we're happy about it to catch some here today, because otherwise she might be a little dull, but we'll go around the rest of the wolf snare. Guess I can show you the reset, just gotta get my wolf snare gloves on. So this is really just a prime location. Uh, I'll show you in a sec, we're on my winter road here. You know, I cut this trail through the bush here and it goes over this beaver pond. So when the ice is thick enough, I drive my truck straight across it and get into camp easier. But it's a beaver pond. Everything, wildlife, deer, moose, um, coyote, wolf, is attracted to beaver pond. There's a lot of activity here. I got two beautiful sets. I've seen wolf tracks on them, both. And that's what I'm here to trap. You know, I've made up my mind. I'm not here to fuck around with coyotes. It's just a waste of my time. I've caught so few here. Like I'm better off to spend the time trying to catch coyotes elsewhere. I'm setting wolf snares, that's it. This is a 1 16th. I ended up buying some of the better wolf snares, the 61 inch ones. They still should be longer. They, they always build these power snares way too short. And the government here won't let me build my own wolf snares, which to me doesn't make any sense because I can build them better and it just, they're all the same. I, I really don't understand that, but whatever. And then I put this 280 pound breakaway on it here because I think otherwise you're just, gonna, you're just gonna have such a hell of a time with deer and moose. So this is all natural and you can see it worked good on this coyote. I want this snare leaning over here, this breaking it up. Uh, wolf is smart animal. I don't want to be too, see that is nice. That breaks that up nice. My ram's too exposed here uh, for wolf snare and you probably get by with it coyote chopping, but I'm gonna set that up here too. Okay, this will do it. And that's a pretty good set and it's all it takes. You know, I'm in and out of here quick. Blood on the ground here. It's not great for wolf trapping. Like when I caught my second wolf there uh, two years ago, caught a coyote there. Well, it was only a couple days later. Had a big old wolf there. So I'm not worried. See my winter road here. I cut this trail, goes through here. We got another snare up there to check. Saved me a lot of time driving down here. 
pretty quick. Well, like doubling up on coyotes is never that impressive to me, but it is impressive to me here at the Wolf Bay. There's just so few number of coyotes here. And like I said, I just quit pissing around with it even. But what's happening here, I think, is we got cold temperatures moving in and the snowstorm. And just being that time of year, I think we're looking at some movement we haven't got yet so far because it's been so warm and such. Got my beaver mitts here. Got this coyote on the seat with me, so I smell like a coyote instead of my snares and ramps. So I, uh, at all costs, avoid pissing around. I like, the main thing is I don't want to be on that trail. So I drive my skidoo up here, jump off here, around, film there, fuck around, put the snare back, etc. Only touch the coyote with my beaver mitts, not my snare gloves. I've had times where I've seen a big old coyote like that last one from a long ways away and I'm like, is it a wolf? The reality of it is it's one of those things when you know, you know. It's a lot like deer hunting. I pissed around there a couple times this year. Go sit out there, you know, you see a buck coming in and he's looking, looking strong a mile away. It looks like a big old buck and then he's just, you know, he's a 140, he's not much or whatever. When you know, you know. When you see a monster buck or you see a wolf, like there is no fucking question, you know what I mean? This is also, it's actually not that great of a coyote. It's thinner. It don't look as good. Uh, we'll take it for sure we will. An average coyote's a good coyote. In this part of the world that's for sure uh so we'll get that reset and i think we're only looking at one more snare but it didn't look like they come over here but at least we'll catch a couple coyotes to entertain us you know guys life in the bush sure is a lot easier when you got a beauty set of tires and i just got these new beauties put on here Picked up a set of stock 16 inch rims for this truck to run my winter tires on. Save these beauties, so I'm really chewing. I cannot say enough about these tires. I've told you before, I'll tell you again. Just because I gotta be at least some use to you. If I'm gonna take all your time, you watch my videos. Fuck, I, there's gotta be some value. This is value. These tires are fucking deadly. Look at the lugs on these here. Like you're going places. But it's like, not only are you going places, but you're going there and you're going in the middle of the bush and you're not popping shitty fucking tires. They haven't let me down once that way. They wear good, they're not loud, they're smooth as hell. They got so many studs in them, look at. They, they, uh, they hold the road like it's icy. You got like nearly one inch lugs here and you're holding the road beauty and they're not even stupid expensive. I'm sure sticking with these Firestone tires, man, they've been so good. You can see my second set over here. Wore right down, I had them on there two years. Still, I can't put a stick through there to save my life. Tires I had on there before that and then Ram Charger were good here. Fuck, and everywhere I go, the tire is flat. Just couldn't keep up to bush life. Okay guys, so today we're actually doing some coyote trapping and uh, run this coyote bait and uh, off to a pretty good snort because this is the first snare of the day and uh, my day is kind of pretty short here on me all of a sudden so we'll see what happens here but here is a beauty that's a damn good coyote there now we just seen this set made here literally in the last video like last check or the check before I caught a coyote this set now it's a beautiful set because it's got this steep little incline on it and everything tips over downhill and the set is still beautiful up there so we'll get a reset here. Okay, so there once again is our beauty little reset and we'll wait till I catch another kite. I think even another one walked through here since I caught this one. Well guys, here we are looking at another ripe beauty of a coyote. This is really just exactly the same kind of set. Beauty trail, good coverage. Look how thick the bush is in through here. It's fucking mint. Like it's 
You can you could easily set 30, 40 rams in here. It wouldn't be wise to. I'm running about a little over 20. It's a little bit funny though, like it's solid producing bait. But I have like that big bait of mine. I trap it at such a radius. I have no problem catching five, six coyotes there. Everything's kind of spread out far enough. I've never had big catches like this on this bait, as good as the bush is and as good as the coyotes are. It's just like, it's just within a closer radius, if you will. Like I've got snares on that best bait of mine that are, you know, probably 600 yards I walk around there. Like I just got it figured at that extent. I don't even have that kind of bush here, but all the same, I love this bait. No deer here too. Fucking things up. They stay clean out of here. It's right on. So you heard me talking when we were up north about this storm and such being good for coyote activity. The previous two coyotes were caught, like that little bit of a shot of snow and a little bit colder temperatures. It's looking that way pretty good. Next bait here. Second snare. Big coyote. Yeah, it's looking a little better, you know, it was pretty slow. It's just been pretty damn warm around here this whole time, so. Now this is a pretty big old coyote. Pretty good fur on him yet though still. Take that one every day of the week. This is a beauty set, we'll just get a reset here. We've set, seen this set many times over the years and I don't think that'll change. Well, here is third snare, second coyote. Like, we're definitely onto something. They're moving good. There's no way we keep up with that ratio. There's no way I catch that many coyotes here. So, we're off to a good start, but it's about to slow down. Like, sometimes you get out here, you catch four coyotes pretty quick, and then you might not catch a damn thing the whole rest of the day. It's just the way of the road. But, that there is sure a good looking coyote. Eh, it's not great, but pretty damn good. You know, the fur's been looking pretty damn good. You can see where this trail comes through. It's right here. It's a tricky reset, but we'll get her done. Okay, guys. This is a, the third snare, or sixth snare and third coyote. It's insane. This is really looking good. This trail is a good one, but it's a terrible one to try and set on it's really really wide open it's set right here i might try and get it down there further but it's a tough ask i'll have to add more anchors i don't have anchors so I, you see i go around all these willows and they don't break take a look here another big beauty coyote big one but uh, big old coarse male coyote is actually not quite as good but we'll take them all the same still a beauty any day some of these are just so forced that you almost regret setting them. Like if you have a good trail, but all you do is end up educating them, you're, you know, it's a definitely a net negative. This one though, it turned out better than I expected here. And it's one I have to cover because it just keeps catching coyotes time and time again. Sun shining here today up at camp, but she's pretty chilly last couple days. Today is like minus 25 or something. It goes 30 yesterday. It's a little chilly, but not bad. Sun's going. Beauty day up at camp. Always is. Yeah, so we're just working around here, you know, in the workshop. Look at how nice some of these coyotes are in here, man. Oh my God. It's a little bit of mess in here. You'll have to pardon me. You know, there's lots going on. I was building some snares and stuff there and different things of that sort. There, the coyotes here are really looking good. Like they're just prime, prime right now. Like they will not be better. There are some beauties. Uh, you get a, a coyote, they look different once you get them on the, it's actually easier to tell once they're in this form than when they're sitting here, when they're like the really good ones. Every coyote here is a damn pretty good one. 
Uh, you look at this one, it is really top notch. The neck is so thick, it's a good texture. The guard hairs are just exceptional. Now you look at these five, this is, you really cannot ask for a better group of five. Um, look at this coyote, see it is harder to tell. This one is on that level nearly. It's a beauty coyote, a really a nice one. Now these two actually look quite a bit similar, like they're off the same line or something. This one's not bad in here, not as thick. This one is thick, thick again, just top notch. And this one is similar coloring. This is also a real beauty. Like once you get these uh, on the stretcher, you'll really see. That one is the thinnest, you can see. Uh, it's thin, not as thick, coarser. Ah, Jesus, these are nice. Just look at them here, said here in the sunlight. I'm taking a video thumbnail, it's too dark. This is kind of what this becomes. <laughs> So these are my four main knives here at camp. They're all the ones Richard Miller sent to me. And uh, you know, I put all these to a lot of work. This is my daily, it's the one I carry all the time. It's, uh, it goes with my beauty trap lines, it's an inline sheath, you know, it's stamped, branded. And it's always on me, it always needs to be on me. Uh, because I need it, it's just essential. This is my, this is the knife I use, I've done the most skinning with. Skinned around 100 coyotes with it there last year alone and used it as a daily. It gets weird though, you start using your daily knife as your skinning knife, it's always dirty, smells like coyote, so you don't want to do that. Then you go to cut your dinner, you don't want to even have your daily knife doing that because it's seen some shit. So I got this big beauty as my cap knife. You know, I cut up meat, I feel pretty fucking cool doing it. You know, it's just a beast of a knife. And this is actually a knife I've been doing all my skinning with. It's a very small knife, uh, which is what you need for skinning. You don't need a big knife. I really liked using this one, had a good feel to it. But I've been feeling so precise with this one lately. It's really fit in my hand. But the problem with switching knives, it took me a while to get used to the stubbier handle, actually. I have big hands. The problem with switching knives is like it's exactly the same as switching your toothbrush in that you get a new one and it just feels so fucking weird in your hand. You don't know what to do with it. You can hardly use the damn thing, but then it just becomes natural. So I use one knife for skinning, you know, that's it. Uh, keep them good and sharp here and I'm just using this stone here. I keep them touched up like this I use it. It's very fine takes off very little and that way they're always just razor sharp very rarely am I doing any kind of uh, Edge work here. I'm just barely barely touching them up kind of thing, but and they are sharp They really are actually well guys just up here in the loft hanging out here I'm gonna show you something funny here showed up the other day and it surprised the hell out of me. And I'm not even so sure why I hung it up here because there's more to this story. So this thing shows up from the April sale and I says, what the hell? I sure as hell didn't have any top. Now truthfully, this don't actually mean that much to me even if it was legitimate. <laughs> Um, I've had so many coyotes rank so high to know that I just haven't had the right coyote come through to be a top lot coyote. They're so rare. You know, you're talking about a group of maybe 30 to 60,000 coyotes and they pick 10 out of them. Like the statistical probability is so low. It's the hardest top lot award to get by far, not even close. But didn't, now it surprised the hell out of me because I look at my lots and stuff here. Still don't really know what's going on. The first thing I check is make sure I didn't have a top lot semi heavy coyote because that don't count at all. And that w isn't what happened. And what I had go on is in my top lots I had one. I had a few were pretty high. I had one I think in the sixth lot but it's the wrong color. It's, it, it's not in the first lot. It's not a select top lot coyote. 
But here's the funny thing is, a few lots down, like my second highest coyote, actually sold for not a tremendous amount. And that's one thing I realized with the fur harvester's sale. Like in the NAFA days, although the averages are comparable, what we were getting at fur harvesters and, and at NAFA, there hasn't been huge discrepancies there in the average pipe price paid. But that NAFA top lot award I seen go as high as $650 for that coyote. Somehow, the highest selling coyote in this whole sale was only 170 something. And it wasn't even the top lot that brought that much, but I did in fact have a coyote in that lot. So maybe that's why it doesn't sell for as high because they just throw these top lot awards around. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But anyway, so I don't know what the hell happened. It's definitely my name on this thing. It's kind of silly hanging it up because I sure did have a top lot kite, but it's a funny story anyway. <laughs> Well guys, I'm afraid I got some explaining to do. I hate bringing you through this because it's painful, but I gotta explain myself here. Uh, it's a pain in the ass, like you wouldn't believe. Anyway, at this point in the season, I, I've i caught a whole bunch of coyotes and half my footage has been deleted. Now I had this problem before where the camera just went said SD error, the whole, all of a sudden my whole project was gone. I could not recover the files. They were corrupted, they were overridden. I said, well shit, I got sent this faulty SD card. Format the SD card, try it again, it happens again. I lose everything, okay, great. I moved on, pissed myself off trying to recover it, no dice. And then I bought these new SD cards, also high quality, spent a whole bunch of money. Oh, I've been spending a whole bunch of money. Lexer, whatever, they're all good. Happens again. Well, I got a problem. And it's bad. You know, guys, I lost that whole first video. Gone, that would have been huge. The first half of my next video, I lost the first five coyote check off, the, off my first trapping video. And I lost another five coyote check the whole day, all the footage gone. The only reason I'm able to show you this much of the video is because I created proxy files to edit with, but they're lower quality, lower resolution, so that's what you're watching. It's not as good as it should be. Usually my videos are way better quality than that. Now this is just so frustrating, you know. I think it's a camera might be doing it, but also I was editing dirt while I was filming and creating proxies and saving them onto the SD card. And I think that might have been buggering it up. Well, it's a tough thing to understand. Uh, and explain. I'll save you the trouble. It's never happened to me before. It's happening on this brand new camera, brand new SD cards. You know, there's shit that goes wrong here all the time and we got to deal with. But when it's my fault, it's much easier to deal with. You know, you figure it out. This is so frustrating. I can't even tell you. Losing all the work and trying to f recover things and fix them back together. But I bought this hard drive. And now I'm backing up the footage all the time because I can't deal with it anymore. And uh, we're going to get the problem fixed. You know, I've learned what I need to do. You know, it's at that point. I got to be backing it up, going through all the due diligence. The footage is way too valuable for us and our channel. You know, to have pieces missing like this is dog shit. And I apologize. I am so frustrated about it. Like at this point, how many kites have we caught? A whole bunch. Like there's. 10 coyotes that are not even in the show. It's uh, so frustrating to me. So thanks for watching guys. I hope the video was pretty good in terms of quality and stuff. Uh, the next video is going to be good. It's already like done. Everything's good there. Got it all backed up and saved on here. And we're trying to figure this out for sure. But going through the due diligence, make sure this shit doesn't happen again. It's just been painful. So hate to put you through that guys, but that's my explanation. And uh, all the best to everyone guys. Thanks for watching.